Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks and tomorrow you are going to be able to get your hands on a brand new tier 10 Soviet heavy tank as a reward vehicle with even a unique number on it if you're one of the first 15,000 people on the European server to be able to get your hands on the vehicle. Today I'm going to break down everything you need to know about what Wargaming is calling the new assembly shop functionality which is similar to how a lot of the Clan Wars players have been able to build their tier 10 tanks but now they're making it available to everyone and not just the Clan Wars players. So Wargaming have got a video on this, let's check it out. So to be able to get the full picture, I'm going to watch Wargaming's video on the Assembly Shop. Now, just a reminder, this is available on their official YouTube channels, and you should go check the video out if you don't want to have an idiot like me talking over, but let's see what they're presenting. A new activity will take place in World of Tanks from June 16th through July 10th. Wow. The assembly Shop. Tomorrow. It will deliver limited vehicles to players in a brand new way. You can get a Tier 10 tank without researching the entire branch, and most importantly, you get to choose which resources you want to use for that. The pioneer of the assembly shop will be the Object 780. It can be obtained in two forms. The first 5,000 players will receive the tank with a special- Just to clarify, the first 5,000 players will be region-based. So I believe on the European server, it's going to be 15,000. I'm watching the video of the Asia server now, which looks like five, and I think NA is seven, although, I, 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 that might, I might not be 100% correct about the numbers, but you're going to get a special style if you're one of the first unique players to be able to get it. 3D style that not only changes the vehicle's look, but also has a unique factory number. It's located on the tank's barrel and turret, and this is its distinctive feature. You won't get to see another one like this in the game. Wow, kind of NFT kind of vibe. Whoa, it's, there's only one available with your number, although it's still different because it's going to have no value uh, after Wargaming have sold it to you, of course. The numbered vehicles are available in limited quantities, but there's still time to decide. And even That's going to be some serious fear of missing out to be able to try and get some of those early numbers, right? Or maybe you've got a number that means a lot to you. Maybe you really like the number um, 422. Uh, I don't know. Maybe that's an important number to you and like you want to have it. Uh, are you going to be able to pick the specific number? I guess we'll have to find out more. Even more than that, as soon as the tanks with the unique number come to an end, you will still have the opportunity to get the object 780. 10,000 more vehicles with Again, that will be on the Asia server. There will be 10,000. I believe on the European server, there's 35,000 additional vehicles to the first 15,000 that come with the style. The 3D style will be ready for delivery. In terms of its characteristics, the tank commands respect. Mm. At first glance, this is quite a mobile and armored heavy tank. Its top speed is 45 kilometers per hour. And because we need every every heavy tank in the game to go 45, which will inevitably go at like 50 or more with a turbo and has 17 horsepower per ton, which is what a decent medium tank used to have back in the day. Specific power is 17 horsepower per ton. Strong turret, well-angled small, lower, and upper. And great turret armor and interesting hull armor with not really a lower plate, just like a, a mid hull that's got uh, extensive angling in between. Glazes plates. All in all, I should probably go quickly go on to Tanks GG to take a look. And that's because they've been super testing this tank for the last few weeks on the European server. And take a look at that. This is 267 millimeters of pen. It does have a bit of a cupola on top. Remember, everything is subject to change with the statistics of the vehicle. Turret armor looks half decent unless you're getting shot by premium rounds, Yank Panzer 100. Upper hull, very good. Lower plate, not so good, but if you angle it like this, I mean, that is 200 effective. Wow. It is going to have some weak points. If you can manage to hide that, it'll be decent. Just a kind of apocalypse grade tank. How about against gold? Well, against 311 millimeters of gold pen, which is quite weak for a premium round. Ugh, it's 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 pretty good. It's not going to hold up against your 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 awesome tank destroyer gold. Breakthrough tank. But if you look closely, you'll see that it's not that simple. The object has a surprisingly cool gun, good accuracy, excellent aiming time and penetration, huge damage. Well, when they say excellent penetration, wrong. 530 alpha is nice, but come on, it's not like huge damage per shot. Uh, the huge damage per shot is, is 750 on something like a, a 60 TP or an E100. And even vehicles like the Rhinoceronte are packing 490 with an auto reloader. But yeah, 530, it's decent. It's a cut above other Soviet heavy tanks apart from the Object 705A. 
damage per shot. The one that really scares me though is seven degrees of gun depression, which kind of makes this a bit like an Object 140, which makes it more flexible than most other Soviet heavy tanks, apart from, ah, uh, you know, an ST2 with its eight. And even good gun depression. All these characteristics allow the tank to play completely different roles in battle. No doubt, no doubt. It can be equally effective, both as a breakthrough tank yep. and, thanks to its almost sniper gun, a support vehicle. So it's basically as meta as you can have in World of Tanks. It's the all singing, all dancing tank of the world. I guess you better rush to be able to spend all of your currency as quickly as possible to be able to get uh, that unique number that you want, right? What's important is to not forget to equip it with the modified configuration. Why? It will keep you from burning. Or you could repair your fuel tanks and maybe use something like preventative maintenance or a fire extinguisher. Obviously, Soviet tanks do have issues with their front plate with the fuel tanks, but as long as you're pumping the repair kit into it, it's definitely manageable. Now, whether or not that is a necessary piece of equipment that you would want to sacrifice for something like vert stabs, gun rammer, vents, or even coated optics or a turbo remains to be seen. Well armored, mobile, and with a handy gun. Great. This I'm is the first truly versatile Soviet heavy tank. Mm, that's a bit bold. I think the 277 is pretty versatile, but I understand that the 277 doesn't quite have that seven degrees of gun depression. Um, and its gun probably isn't sniper worthy, but it's not that different. I feel like Wargaming may be overselling it a little bit with this video. How does the assembly shop work? This is the interesting part. To get the Object 780, you need to spend resources. Five types exist. Once again, I'd like to clarify I'm watching the video of the Asia server, if I haven't said that enough, and there will be significantly more on the European server and also the NA server because the player numbers are higher. Bonds, gold, credits, free experience, and blueprint fragments. So basically every single currency in World of Tanks. That's actually not bad. So if you've got a big glut of free experience like me, you can spend that. Blueprints, I have no need for them on my main account anymore. I can spend that. On my free-to-play account, I have to decide whether I want to spend bonds or whether I should save them up for maybe the next Chieftain auction. I, I like the way that Wargaming are allowing you to do everything rather than a specific currency that you may or may not have at this time. A bar of resource accumulation will be displayed at the bottom. To start accumulating resources, you just need to select the amount of a specific resource in a corresponding window. Ooh, 10% of the bar was filled by 4,000 bonds. Are they saying that this tank should cost 40,000 bonds? And click spend resources. How you do it exactly is up to you. You can spend resources on... Okay, so it looks like 2,750 gold gave you plus 5%. So I guess if we times that number by 20, which is going to be like 55,000 gold, right? Wargaming are thinking that this tank, if you want to fill the whole bar with gold, is going to cost you 55,000 gold, unless I'm being an idiot right now. Wow, how many credits are they going to Parts think that you have to the have? Whole event. And you can fill Whoa, 50 million credits. This is actually really interesting to me because what it's suggesting is what Wargaming think all of their different currencies are worth. I think for the bonds, it looked like, uh, this is me just guessing by the way, it looks like it's going to be 40,000 bonds, 55,000 gold, or it's going to be 50 million credits. I've got to add the zeros in there. What about the free experience? Fill in the scale with only one resource or several. 40,000 gives you 5% yes. by the looks so of it. Was it 15%? Let me take a quick look. Okay, no, and it's you only 5% with only 50K. one resource or several. Woohoo, 40K. So that means that once again, we need to take 40,000 and times it by 20. 800,000 free experience. Wargaming are clearly seeing how much people are willing to part with on their account. So this is quite scary as to what I would spend to, to actually get this vehicle. Obviously the free experience, if you've got everything in World of Tanks already and you don't want to dump it into crew training, that kind of looks like the best to me. Of course, if you don't have it, then you'll have to spend gold to convert it to be able to get it. One thing that's interesting to me is remember when Wargaming are doing their 35 experience per gold, when the conversion is on sale, how much would you uh, how much would you be able to get for your for your 30 for that so that's really interesting if you were to actually grind and then spend the 55,000 gold to convert into experience that in theory would mean that you would get way more than actually spending the free experience so that for me is a little bit bizarre i don't think you should actually spend the gold on this if you can do the free experience for the conversion but of course then you have to grind the experience yourself to be able to get it obviously i'm just theory crafting here for once 
you should start with free experience. This is the most advantageous resource of the assembly shop. Everyone has it on their account, and it can be converted from combat experience or simply earned. In the okay, so they've literally broken it down for us here, so it is what I was suggesting. So it looks like my numbers and my discussion were correct. In the case, personal reserves will help. The most convenient resource, for obvious reasons, is gold. With its help, you can quickly fill in the progression bar and get the desired tank if you don't want to spend too much time on it. Sure. However, it will cost a lot. It's yep. much more profitable to invest gold in the conversion of combat experience to free experience. I didn't watch this video before. I literally just figured it out. That does make sense. Bonds will That's really interesting that Wargaming are giving you such a good uh, trade for your time when it comes to converting... Uh, converting your regular experience into free experience. That suggests to me that Wargaming really want to start to pump people up into thinking that they should spend their gold into converting experience, which is actually one of the most stupid things you can do in World of Tanks with your money. It's very expensive, and it's definitely one of the underhanded, sneaky business tactics that Wargaming use to make you think that it's worth it. For example, and sorry to derail the video here for just a second, think about if you're researching a gun on a tank. It costs 60,000 experience to research some of the, the tier 10 guns on tier 9 tanks. To be able to get that, that's 2,000 gold that you'd have to spend that you've already grinded the experience on to be able, and that's when it's on sale, to be able to get that gun. It's outrageously expensive. Also help. Their value is quite high, so you can use them to fill in a significant part of the progression bar. For example, 6,000 bonds is a little bit more than the cost of a piece of equipment. At the same time, 6,000 bonds can fill the progression bar by a nice 15%. Yeah, bonds are one of those resources that it's just not possible for you to be able to, to get apart from grinding all of your tier 10 tanks every single week. But again, grinding every single grinding tier 10 tanks is an expensive thing to do because you're not getting credits and you're actually probably losing a few credits unless you're running a premium account by playing tier 10. Blueprint fragments can easily be called the main auxiliary resource. I'm going to be spending every all of mine. Every player probably has unused fragments that will come in handy. That's not true. Not every player. Players, the only people who have a lot of uh, blueprint fragments are players who pretty much have all of the tanks unlocked the already. Assembly shop. They can help fill in up to 36% of the progression bar. 20 okay, this is an interesting mechanic. So... 25 universal, sorry, 25 national equals 1% and 16 universal equals 1%. So that means that in theory to be able to get it, well, it's obviously going to be 1,600 universal to fill the whole bar. I think I actually have that on my main account if I'm going to be able to do all of it. 2% with national fragments and 14% with universal ones. Wow, okay, that's absolutely outrageous. Is this the maximum number that you can spend right here? Is it that you can only do up to 36% with each one? Is that what Wargaming is suggesting? Credits are the least convenient currency for filling in the progression bar. I don't agree. Yes, it's easy to earn them, sure, but sure. you will need too many of them to fill in the progression bar up to 100%. One million? So I must have miscalculated something then. When I was back here and I was looking at the, the credits that they had, we actually need to spend 100 million credits to be able to get the tank, which is just simply ludicrous. That's outrageous. I want to stop for a second to tell you that your credits are actually worth way more than you think they are. Your credits, to be able to get them, a very, 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 very good player playing premium tanks with a credit booster can maybe make a million credits an hour. Uh, and then it just goes down from there. Your average and your below average players are probably only making half a million to a few hundred thousand credits per hour of play in premium tanks with credit boosters with a premium account to be able to, to make um, uh, that many credits. Accordingly, when we think that 1% uh, is 1 million and you're going to need 100 million credits, well, then to be able to earn that is going to be at least 100 hours, even for incredible players. And then for, for the below average players, even with credit boosters, you're going to have to play the game for about 300 hours to be able to grind to be able to get this tank. That is preposterous. You should use credits in two cases, either to reach 100% after you first filled in the bar with other resources, or in case you really have a lot of credits. Honestly, you'd be best to save those credits to be able to invest either in being competitive in the game with premium consumables or premium rounds, or alternatively just save them for other auctions. For example, the most 
the most that I've spent on previous vehicles, uh, let's think about it. The Alf Klonings Panzer Panther, I think I spent like 9 or 10 million. Uh, the the Chilin, I spent 50. The T22 Stridni or the Medium, I spent uh, it's about 77 million credits on. And that was purely because of fear of missing out. Uh, the idea of now spending 100 million on this tank, I think that would be a terrible idea when you've got so many other currencies you can dump in. There are plenty of combinations to fill in the progression up to 100%. You just need to understand which option suits you best. So obviously this is going to be bespoke for everyone. Everyone's going to be able to make their own decisions. So let me just try and break it down a little bit. Okay, so I feel that the free experience is actually a very good thing to do for a lot of players uh, because you maybe don't need it to invest either into crew training, you don't need it to invest into field mods, you don't need it to invest into uh, actually just getting up the tech tree and to be able to play, not have to play those tank stock. I think for a lot of players who are looking at purchasing this tank, free experience will be great. I think it'd be very silly to spend gold because remember, 50, well, 550 gold if you if you do it when there's a sale going on and you can get 35 for each of the uh, gold pieces that you spend, it's actually going to get you 19,250 free experience. Now, of course, you had to go and grind that. But let's be honest, as long as you uncheck accelerated crew training in some of your favorite tanks, that's not the be all end all. It does take you some time. But if you also use, you know, five times experience fence or you use those three times bonuses that you have from a premium account or just your daily doubles, that is by far the best way to do it. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, don't spend gold. You'd be better to wait for a sale and to do a conversion. Now if Wargaming don't do a sale and you have to do it at a terrible 25 uh, experience rate, that is still better because you're getting 13,750, which means that you should never spend any gold for this event. You should fill up your free experience bar unless you literally have no free experience on your account or no experience that you can convert. Bonds wise, I would, it's it's tempting. You could spend 40,000 bonds and literally fill up the entire bar. I still think that it'd probably be better to do your free experience. But if you have a load of bonds lying around your account and you don't want to get bond equipment and you don't want to save them for some kind of cheap auction fair play, obviously blueprints are going to be a fantastic opportunity for players who have all of the vehicles unlocked or people who just don't really use them anyway. I'm probably going to dump all of my universal fragments on my main account and be able to just save everything else. Credits, I think it'd be the one of the worst ones to do here. It's literally so much of your time you have to put in. The only kinds of players who should really dump credits are players who uh, that's all you have left and you've got nothing else on your account or players who just absolutely love playing the Type 59 for 20,000 games and for all of you, 100 million credits is probably nothing. Everything depends on the resources you have, the time you're ready to spend, sure. and whether or not you wish to invest gold in the conversion of combat experience to free experience. At least Wargaming are being upfront about it. Uh, this seems to me that they are trying to train you to do that, though, which is, which is pretty outrageous. If you don't manage to spend enough resources in time and get the tank, all invested resources will return to your account automatically. Well, that's nice. Moreover, you can return all your resources at any moment. Just press the corresponding button. Well, that's nice as well. It's nice they give you your money back there. Use your chance. So Wargaming haven't really explained to us uh, how uh, we're going to get our specific numbers. Is it just literally the sweatiest nerd with the best connection who logs in and literally just buys out the vehicle instantly? Um, that would be something that's interesting. So just to clarify on that, it looks like Wargaming are going to be just assigning the numbers sequentially. So you won't know what number you're exactly going to get. But obviously, if you if you're if you're if you wake up tomorrow. Uh, for 7 a.m. Central European summertime on the European server and you, you dump all of your resources in as quickly as possible, then you will get one of the lower numbers if that's something that really matters to you. And so there you have it, ladies and gents. That's everything that you really know to, need to know about the assembly shop. Let me finish this video by just clarifying whether I think this is like a good thing or whether it's a bad thing for the game. Well, firstly, I, I, I don't really like the wargaming are just putting this tank in so quickly without, in my opinion, having had time to be able to balance it out and also without giving it to the community contributors to be able to review, to be able to tell their audiences whether they think the tank is actually any good or not. And then having this like fear of missing out style currency auction. 
especially at such an awkward time of the day for some people who are at work. Maybe all of the tanks will go before they've come home from work, possibly, although I don't think that they will do. There's so many things to be immensely alarmed about with an event style such as this. What do I think about the prices uh, that Wargaming are presenting here? Well, I mean, 800,000 free experience. You know what, that sounds still like a huge amount, especially considering that the Object 268 version 5 was easily achievable for, I think it was about 600,000 free experience, and that's if you wanted to be truly safe. So this is definitely them stepping the stepping it up in the cost. I clearly mistyped the credits because the credits is actually going to be 100 million rather than 50 million. Uh, for that, that's just insane figures for the amount of time that you're going to have to invest. I also think the amount of gold that you'd have to spend is pretty crazy, so I really hope that everybody's got enough experience on their account and they don't have to just dump in the 55,000 gold because as I worked out, 55,000 gold, if you were to spend that, would actually be enough at sale price to be able to get you 1.9 million free experience, so don't do that. Um, it's, it's an interesting one. The, the Wargaming are allowing you to be able to dump currencies off your account to be able to get a tank that may or may not be good. And you're going to have to just hang around for the YouTube channel tomorrow where I try and play and be able to get a, a full video out for you on this tank. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that's it for today uh, about Wargaming's new assembly shop style release of a new tier 10 reward tank. What do you think about it? Do you think it's a bunch of garbage? Do you think this is Wargaming trying to play on our emotions and trying to drain us of all of our money and literally trying to milk us like we're cattle? Or do you think that uh, it's, it's a fair way to be able to release something that's new and exciting and you don't see it's going to be too damaging for the game? Let me know in the comments. And if you like this video and you thought it was useful, given you like my breakdown and my analysis, give the video a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And good luck tomorrow in getting the number that you want. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.